the day it came on the market, we stood here and we were like, we have to do something with this site. Welcome to round two of building on a slope in Silverstream. This one's actually been owned by six different people, first chopped up in 2000, so 23 years it's been owned, no one's been able to build on it. Uh, don't know why, probably a number of reasons, but from the moment you walk around the corner out there and the view of the Tower Ruas opens up. The day it came on the market we stood here and we were like, we have to do something with this site. We've got a house plan in mind, we've just gone unconditional and we're pretty stoked to start locking some of that stuff in. 2nd of February, we own this piece of dirt and it's all go. Round two. So this will be the second time I've built a house for myself and both times on you know, reasonably gnarly sites. I look back at the section nobody wanted and that started that process four years ago. I've learned so much in that, that we can apply to here. We're gonna build a slightly different house, slightly different brief to obtain to. And one of the biggest things I learned on the section nobody wanted is to have a really solid outside plan and to do all of that work first before we start the building work to like get in and do the cuts and fills and all of the landscaping we want to do as much of that as possible right at the start. Because we could even like angle that box that way, right? Yeah. Yeah. What I struggle with is that right now we have a floor plan but I have no idea what the outside of the house looks like. So I feel like I can't commit to a floor plan until I know what outside of the house looks like because until I get that vision in my head, I can't say that I love the house. And from what I know about designing on these kinds of sites is there's no point putting the garage all the way down the bottom if the driveway's all the way up here. So there's kind of like a logic. And then the other thing I struggle with is like, I think about earthworks and retaining walls and slab details and as soon as we're like yeah i see a picture online i'm like that's so cool that's going to be so much work <laughs> when we started you wanted a super traditional looking house yeah i like um what are they called gables gable ends yeah josh likes ultra modern kind of like box floating boxes, boxes. <laughs> so that's our design brief currently. <laughs> Traditional gables meet modern boxes. Like I love like grey town kind of like villas with like the verandas and the wraparound and the weatherboard. One of the very first pictures we looked at, uh, both myself and Luke, the designer, and I looked at each other and thought, yeah, that would work really well on a large flat site. We're getting there though, eh? Yeah, I think, I think so. And we're meeting the designer next week and we're actually going to give him a, like a mood board of all the things we like. Like right now we have what's basically like Balkan location um, with a few rooms in it. And next week we're meeting the designer to start fine tuning that. And so next step is to load a topo into the computer. Because the, the biggest thing with a sloping site is you've got to make sure whatever you're building is you working with the lay of the land. Uh, Nicole's making a list of how it has to look and I'm making a list of how the heck are we going to build it. And we have a firm budget. Uh, we, we don't want to spend more than a million dollars on this build. Yeah, no, nowhere near that. Which we obviously know is a lot of money. But, you know, you watch those screen design shows and they're like, oh, our budget is this and then it ends up being double at the end. We have a track record of building houses on time and on budget. Famous last week. you got to have an understanding of like, this is how much money I want to spend. Then you got to make that real clear when you go through design. These are the must-haves, these are the nice-to-haves. 
I think what we know about building houses is that if the plan isn't solid from the very start, that's when you start to rack up funds. Yeah, and you, if you make changes, yeah. like, like the easiest time to make changes is when it's a piece of paper. Yeah, so we are like going like all in on the plan and then just hoping that it will work out and we don't have to make changes on site. Which is really hard for me, like, like I'm already chomping to like, I just want to go up there and start weed eating and get a digger and move dirt around. Uh, but what we want to put our time and energy into right now is a plan that we know will work. A really well thought out plan. If you want to follow along with this and see what the cool things we're going to do with it, go ahead, click subscribe and uh, watch us build this house start to finish.